the Tiger Cat hydrostatic drive demonstrator. This apparatus incorporates the same types of hydraulic components that we find in Tiger Cat hydrostatic skidders and drive to tree feller bunchers. These primary components are a variable displacement piston pump, a variable displacement bent axis motor, a drive pedal assembly, and a low pressure inline hydraulic oil filter. Here are the fundamental building blocks of a hydrostatic transmission. We will see that the principles governing the function and control of the hydrostatic demonstrator are embodied in Tiger Cat's reliable and smooth running skidders and wheeled feller bunchers. Now let's take a closer look at Tiger Cat's hydrostatic drive demonstrator. The hydrostatic demonstrator is fitted with a proportional double pedal drive control valve. One pedal directs forward machine travel while the other directs reverse travel, exactly as we find in Tiger Cat skidders and wheeled feller bunchers. The foot pedal valve transmits hydraulic signals to the variable displacement hydraulic pump. The pump, in turn, is connected to the variable displacement hydraulic motor. An inline filter is included to clean oil as it recycles into the pump through the charge circuit. Finally, we have fitted a manually activated disc brake to simulate a load. As we apply the brake, we can see the internal components of the motor respond. This system, composed of hydraulic pump, motor, controls, and filtration element, is referred to as a hydrostatic transmission. All of the components are connected in a closed loop hydraulic circuit. This means the oil in the system is constantly cycled from the pump to the motor and back again. We can compare this arrangement to an open loop hydraulic system where oil flows back to tank before re-entering the circuit. When pressing or releasing the foot pedal, we are altering the displacement of the hydraulic pump and motor. Displacement is the volume of oil that passes through the pump in a single revolution. This quantity of oil is measured in cubic units per revolution. When the operator presses the foot pedal, a hydraulic message is transmitted to the pump's internal controls. These controls set the angle or stroke of the pump's variable swash plate. The angle of the swash plate determines the displacement of the pump. Changing the swash plate angle alters the relative volumes of the pistons as the cylinder block rotates. As with any pump in a closed loop system, our drive pump is equipped with a charge pump. The charge pump performs three essential functions in the hydrostatic system. It replaces oil loss to lubrication and internal leakage. It supplies pilot oil pressure for control purposes and it cycles cooling oil through the main pump and motor. Recall that when pressure is applied to the control pedal, the swash plate strokes out of the neutral position by a few degrees. As the pedal is pressed further, the swash plate strokes to a greater degree, increasing the pump's displacement. This output flow is defined as displacement multiplied by revolutions per minute. We see from this mathematical expression that flow rate increases as displacement increases. On the Tiger Cat hydrostatic demonstrator, the pump reaches maximum displacement when the control pedal is depressed by about one third. The process is similar when traveling in reverse, except that the swash plate strokes in the opposite direction. We might now ask where the oil is going as it leaves the pump. Let's look at the hydrostatic demonstrator. We see that the oil is flowing from the pump to the motor. The motor converts this hydraulic energy into mechanical energy, which will drive the machine's wheels. On the demonstrator, a brake disc functions as our drive wheel. We mentioned earlier that the pump is at full stroke after the control pedal is pressed by approximately one-third. But what about the final two-thirds of the pedal's range? The final two-thirds of foot pedal travel provide precise control of the drive motor displacement angle. Note that the hydraulic pump and motor function on the same principle of variable displacement. In both components, we vary displacement by changing the relative volumes of the pistons in the cylinder block while it is rotating. However, 
This effect is achieved differently in the motor than it is in the pump. In the case of the bent axis motor, we speak not of swash angle, but rather of displacement angle. This is because the bent axis motor does not actually contain a variable swash plate. Instead, we vary the displacement of the motor pistons by shifting the angle of the entire cylinder block relative to the motor shaft. To achieve this motion, the motor cylinder block is coupled to a lens plate. The lens plate rides on a cradle machined into the motor port plate, which is bolted to the end of the motor case. As the lens plate rides back and forth on the cradle, the angle between the pistons and the motor shaft changes. The hydraulic motor displacement angle determines the speed and torque delivered to the drivetrain at a given level of engine horsepower. We can think of torque as a rotational force exerted on the drivetrain, or we can imagine it more simply as a twisting force placed on a bolt with a wrench. Horsepower equals torque multiplied by speed. At a given level of horsepower, we can have more torque and less speed, or greater speed and less torque. However, we cannot have more speed and more torque because our supply of horsepower is finite. It is limited by the diesel engine in the machine. Note that in the demonstrator, an electric motor serves as our engine. As we reduce the motor displacement angle, less fluid is displaced per revolution and the motor turns faster. Motor speed increases, but torque decreases. If we increase the motor displacement angle, the motor speed drops, but more torque is delivered to the drivetrain. This additional torque may be required if a machine is climbing a slope or pulling a heavy load. We can see from the Tiger Cat hydrostatic demonstrator that the operator of a hydrostatic machine easily controls travel speed in forward or reverse simply by pressing the drive pedal. But if the operator controls ground speed with the drive pedal, who or what regulates the torque supplied to the drivetrain?